Good morning, all the invitees and guests for two days national seminar on numismatics reconstruction of South Indian history and 32nd annual conference of South Indian Numismatics Society being organized by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University and South Indian Numismatics Society in collaboration with Telangana State Council of Higher Education, Hyderabad. It is my proud privilege to welcome all the guests and invitees for today's function. First, now I welcome today's president of the function, Professor E. Sudhar Anigaru, Director, GRCRD, and Seminar Director. Welcome you, Madam. Please occupy the chair. It is my proud privilege to welcome today's chief guest, Professor B. Kishan Rao Garu, member, RQL Advisory Board, NAI New Delhi, former registrar, Usman University. Please come on to the stage and occupy the chair, sir. <laughs> Also, I welcome Professor K. P. Rao Garu, Department of History, University of Hyderabad. Kindly come on to the stage and ask by the chair, sir. Also, now, now I welcome Dr. Satyamurti Garu, President, ASI, Director, and uh, is the he is from Kerala. Now I welcome Dr. Satyamurti Garu. Kindly come on to the stage and ask by the chair, sir. Now I welcome our registrar, Dr. Professor A. V. R. N. Reddy Garu. Please come on to the stage and occupy the chair, sir. Also, I welcome our Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor Vadanam Srinivas Garu, and uh, President of the Pneumatic Society, South Indian Pneumatic Society, uh, Dr. Raja Reddy Garu. Kindly come on to the stage and occupy the chair, sir. Also, now I welcome Dr. Dayakar Garu, he is the head department of history, Dr. Ambedkar Open University. Kindly come on to this team. Also, I welcome Dr. Radha Krishnagaru. He is a, a museum curator, Reserve Bank of India. Please come on to this stage. I welcome Dr. Aruna. Kindly present a flower bouquet to our today's president of the function, Professor Isuda Ranigaru. Avinash, Avinash, please. <laughs> now I welcome Dr. Sri Venigar, kindly present a flower bouquet to today's uh, chief guest of the function from Sir Krishna Dawa. I request to Sri Dayagar, Sri Dayagar Garu kindly present a book to Sri K.P. Rao Garu. <laughs> Professor K.P. Rao Garu. <laughs> I request Naren Dogaru, kindly present a book to Naren Dogaru, please. Yeah. Next, Dr. Lakshman Garu. Padala Lakshman Garu. Kindly present a flower book to Dr. Raja Reddy Garu. I request to Yadagiri Garu kindly present a flower bouquet to our registrar, Professor AVR and Reddy Garu. I request Subaru Garu, Subaru is here. 
కిరణ్ శ్రీ కిరణ్ గారు తల్లి ప్రజెంట్ బొగ్గెట్టు అవర్ డీన్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ ఆఫ్ సోషల్ సైన్సెస్ ప్రొఫెసర్ పడ్డాలం శ్రీనివాస్ గారు అవర్ రిక్వెస్ట్ నాగరాజు గారు కైండ్లీ ప్రజెంట్ ఏ ఫ్లవర్ బొకేటు అవర్ హెడ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ శ్రీ డాక్టర్ దేకర్ గారు అవర్ రిక్వెస్ట్ దయాకర్ గారు అగైన్ దయాకర్ గారు కైండ్లీ ప్రజెంట్ బొకేటు డాక్టర్ సత్యమూర్తి గారు సునీల్ పోతన ప్లీజ్ కంఫస్ట్ ప్రజెంట్ ఫ్లవర్ బుకెట్ టూ డాక్టర్ రాధాకృష్ణ గారు మ్యూజియం క్రియేటివ్ ఆర్బిఐ I request all the dignitaries on the dais kindly proceed for the floral tributes and uh, lighting of the lamp. Now I request all the dignitaries kindly offer the floral tributes to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar portrait. దేవకి నేను కొద్దిగా బ్యాక్ చేయను దేవకి ఇంకా అదే క్లోజ్ that fast group photo maybe
Thank you, sir, and madam. Now I request Professor E. Sudhar Ramigaru, today's uh, president of the function, kindly proceed for the further proceedings. Thank you very much. Respected Professor P. Kishan Rao, sir, our Guru, uh, Usman University, and uh, service uh, guide, uh, philosopher, friend, and uh, guiding is an, as in many ways, a uh, well wisher of Ambedkar Open University. And uh, today I'm happy to re uh, receive him as a chief guest of uh, event, uh, respected Sachamurti uh, Garu, Secretary of Science, and uh, Pirogar University of Hyderabad, uh, <coughs> and Reddy, our registrar, and uh, uh, our today's uh, keynote addressee and uh, a veteran doctor, as well as uh, the famous person who uh, researcher on coins and numismatics in India, Dr. D. Raja Reddy Garu, and um, uh, we requested Professor Timbal Limbadri, sir. Sir is busy with the meeting, but he conveyed his wishes to the seminar. And uh, he wished to join us uh, at his convenience. Um, and uh, um, Radha Krishna Garu and uh, our uh, Dean Padanam Srinivas, and uh, the person, key person who is making uh, all efforts, most of the efforts, is local secretary of the uh, conference, Dr. Dayakar Hachodi. And uh, uh, honorable guests who are here to attend this conference and uh, who was kindly enough to make their convenient time to attend this conference are uh, guests from outside. And um, Mirinda, Renda, Srinivasgaru, and uh, Jackie Shinsa of Saints who are instrumental in getting us uh, to happen this conference at a very short possible time and uh, in between we are geared up with the uh, NAC accreditation pro revisit process and you know several other happenings in our university. Somehow we could make it and uh, uh, on behalf of our vice chancellor who is away on a very important work, uh, I stand here to welcome you all to our uh, here, historical, the first ever open university in India and um, I welcome all my research scholars uh, and colleagues, mostly the deans and directors and the colleagues of uh, Ambedkar Open University and research scholars who assembled here uh, to witness this two-day national event um, on the um, numismatics and reconstruction of South Indian history with a theme and the 32nd annual conference of South Indian Numismatic Society. Uh, for the guests who have come from outside uh, um, Hyderabad, uh, I would like to mention that Ambedkar Open University which was started in the year 1982 with a vision to reach the unreached, the marginalized sections of the India with the visionary um, thoughts of uh, Professor G. Ram Reddy, sir. And uh, we are making to realize the social equality concept, uh, the educational growth uh, to the uh, largest possible persons, Dr. Babasa Bambedkar, who fe feels that the goals of education has to be reached to the maximum, uh, the marginalized communities. And we are very proud to say that uh, recent NAC visit also but was very surprised to see uh, more than uh, like, you know, 86.7, that is 87% of our uh, more than 1 lakh students are from the SCST communities. That is the, never in this uh, India, first uh, open university, rather the first university to have this uh, kind of largest number of SCST minorities and BC communities in India. So uh, with this goal of uh, reaching the unreached, Ambedkar University is striving hard. And uh, I'm proud to say that recently it got a uh, 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 grade for the accreditation process. And we are uh, very recently, just three days back, 
and uh, we are very happy to uh, celebrate that also just a day for yesterday. Uh, so on the New Year uh, gift, the Ugadi, Krodi Nama Samatsar Ugadi Rozu, Andaram Guda, we are celebrating, we are in a jubilant mode of celebrating our uh, accreditation of getting A grade uh, in this process. So, the, uh, and I wish you all a Telugu Happy New Year and Tamil New Year also. Most of Tamil friends are also here. Uh, Hyderabad, as you all know, is a historical city. Witness the kingdoms of uh, many, uh, from the ancient past to the present. So, it located on the banks of the river Mosi. And uh, Krishna also, history of Hyderabad, uh, it goes back to uh, thanks to the excavation, thanks to the innovations. Uh, we have been, you know, updating our knowledge about Hyderabad history, which is going back to the prehistorical times. And uh, this um, evidences of uh, Mesolithic, Megalithic, and Neolithic habitation uh, followed by Vishakundin, Sikshwakus, Chalukyas, Yadavas, Kakatiyas, Bahaminis, and Rasabjahis. So, this uh, uh, Telangana state which we are in here today, um, it, it witnessed the rise and fall of the dynasties and the people's contribution to the core, this most happening state. So um, uh, I don't have to explain much about numismatics there because uh, experts are here, but uh, just to have an introduction, uh, remarks, uh, numismatics, which owes its origin to numisma, Currency signifies the coins and the Indian antiquity of sometimes uh, designated subject as Paurana, Purana, Paurana. So science dealt, uh, it's a science that dealt with the old silver currency uh, known as the Purana. So um, it has many names, Karshapana and uh, different, different dynasties has coined the terms. And uh, it's also translated new and languages as Mudra Vidya. Uh, mudra Tattva, Mudra Vijnana. So it's a science of, about the coins, about the numismatics. And uh, Rupa, Rupia, old silver uh, objects are also called in Sanskrit. And uh, the importance of coins as a source of history in reconstruction of history is much more uh, when it is corroborated with other evidences. Uh, we have uh, uh, very rare uh, incidents in the history which was uh, taken um, from the coins because there are no, uh, when there was no literary evidences and other sources, coins acted upon a very important source of information which retrieved the history and uh, brought to light uh, several new things. And the collection of the coins also, because most of the, uh, uh, the Raja Redigar including they are not from history, but you know, collection of coins is a hobby, and that made them to be so prominent that you know they they are contributing to history with their innovations, with their research findings. So uh, it, the collection of coins goes back to the Greek civilization. Augustus is known for being the biggest collection of the coins of his uh, previous times. So uh, uh, in India also common man and uh, cops in uh, Anantapur and in several others who are uh, collecting more than 155 dynasties of coins. One of the cop, uh, he, he collected that many coins over a period of time. So this uh, collection of the coins and the numismatists uh, who are contributing a lot to the history by uh, kind of you know adding uh, to the history. And uh, in this, uh, you know, numismatics plays a crucial role in historical research by providing insights in the dating, chronology, and retrieving the political, social, economic history, and the diplomatic history because exchange of the uh, trade and commerce between the neighboring countries also, the evidence of coins brought to the light of the relations which India has with the neighboring countries. And the arch, um, numismatic evidence is also uh, serves as a valuable interdisciplinary tool for historians, uh, mostly in retrieving the history. So uh, the key aspects are uh, the historical research, identification and classification also done in a, such a scientific manner that uh, they based on the factors of their uh, metal disposition, designs, 
and uh, inscriptions and the mint marks. So authentication, grading, collection of acquisition, exhibition and display, and research and publications. Ultimately, all these excavations and retrieving leads to the publications. So with this uh, introduction, uh, I, I'll just go on uh, stating that the richness of our past is adding with the explorative and discoveries of uh, the um, South India. Most probably be, the theme is on South India, particularly in Telangana. Very recently, uh, one more excavation uh, that uh, uh, during the time of Ikshvakus, dating back to uh, two millenniums, like you know, second to third, for third to fourth century, belongs to the Ikshvakus time. Has been retrieved, excavated. And added history uh, that you know, Fanigiri um, uh, village at Surya Pit. So, uh, almost 3,730 coins have been retrieved in a pot while in the river uh, bed. So, this um, is another, like you know, Buddhist uh, sites are also at the same time being uh, discovered. So, with this, uh, we can see that you know, this seminar with an intention of, you know, calling all the most of the numismatics of South India, historians and the researcher to assemble at a place with the initiative of South Indian Numismatic Society uh, to give a place for them to deliberate upon with an objective of eliciting the importance of numismatics uh, study in the South India and explain the coins and the expansion of the trade in commerce, as I said, and to study the metals in the coins and to analyze the seals and the symbols on the coins, and to explore the localities of minting of the uh, coins. There are uh, minting centers also in uh, South India. And uh, with this objectives, conference proposed to across uh, address the pertinent problems and the issues of study of coins, minting, circulation of various dynasties. And also, um, we have another endowment lecture by Professor Shekuntala Garu. Um, uh, today only in the evening, and uh, we have planned also a cultural event uh, on the fag end of the day before dinner. And uh, the sub themes which are going to be deliberated upon is numismatic studies in South India issues and challenges, role of coins and reconstruction of economic history, metallurgical science and technology in so South India, coins minting centers, and significance of coins in South India. These are all the sub themes which we are going to discuss today. Uh, as a part of the uh, conference. And once again, I welcome all of you to this most happening two-day deliberations, which are going to be, uh, we listen, we, we are fortunate to listen to the researchers of the papers. More than 30 papers have been received so far last week and many more to come, I think, with this uh, two days. Uh, thank you, South India Numismatic Society for giving an opportunity to select our university to as a platform to, for this deliberation two-day event. Thank you all once again. And uh, now I call upon. And I also welcome those who joined online. Uh, we have opened a link. So um, welcome all the scholars who are there. And welcome Danish Moin, just <laughs> came in. Yeah, uh, now uh, introduction of the chief guest and guest of honor by Dr. Jida Ayakar, Head Department of History, Dr. B.R.A. Good morning, everyone. At the second annual conference of South Indian Numismatic Society, Organized by the Department of History, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University. I, I am welcome you all for today's conference. Uh, today, Chief Guest, Professor V. Kishan Rao, sir. He served as a uh, professor in History and Archaeology, Department of Usmani University, and uh, officiated as a Dean Development of UGC Affairs and a Dean Faculty of Arts, Usman University. And also, he served as a registrar, Usman University. And uh, he written several books on archaeology, ancient Indian history, and, and, and uh, particularly South Indian history. I welcome you, sir, for this uh, today's conference. 
టుడేస్ జనరల్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ కేపీ రావు గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ ఆర్కియాలజీ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ ఈ వాజ్ సర్వ్డ్ యాజ్ ఏ డైరెక్టర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్కియాలజీ అండ్ మ్యూజియం అసిస్టెంట్ ఆర్కియాలజిస్ట్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వేరియస్ కెపాటీ కెపాసిటీస్ ఇన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ ఈజ్ టీచింగ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ థర్టీ త్రీ ఇయర్స్ యాజ్ ఏ టీచింగ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ అండ్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఇయర్స్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ ఐ వెల్కమ్ యూ సార్ ఫర్ టూ డేస్ యాన్యువల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ అండ్ సత్యమూర్తి గారు ఇస్ ఎ మెంబర్ సీనియర్ నిమిస్మెటిక్ మెంబర్ he served as various capacities in south indian numismatic society and also learned uh, scholar he worked on archaeology and numismatics last 30 years so i welcome you sir for today's annual conference <coughs> our beloved registrar dr avr reddy garu he was a professor in public administration department he served as a controller the uh, department of uh, public as a public administration department and uh, he served as a head department of public administration in ambedkar open university and now he was a registrar i welcome you sir for today's annual conference keynote speaker today dr d raja reddy garu retired not retired he was a very active and uh, very dynamic uh, sir basically he was born 18th november 1938 at jangampalli village nizambad district and he served as a doctor neurologist in apollo hospital uh, 40 years as a neurosurgeon he turned into the numismatist and uh, he wrote nine books on numismatics in various aspects and also uh, he published nearly 50 articles in reputed journals across the world i welcome you sir for today's annual conference and also radha krishna sir he was the curator rbi uh, he served as a curator and various capacities in rbi and uh, he also interest a in numismatic society he actively participated in several numismatic society conference across the south india i welcome you sir and also my friend and my brother professor sinwas vadyanam garu former head department of history he served as a additional controller now he was the dean faculty of social science he written more books on telangana history regional history i i welcome you sir for today annual conference of 32nd annual conference of south indian numismatic society thank you thank you one and all now i call upon uh, dr sachimurthy garu secretary south indian numismatic society about uh, introduction about the south indian numismatic society namaskar thank you yeah
he knows about our ancient uh, technology and other things. So that was the thing. With that intention, even this uh, numismatic society of uh, North India was there. But uh, they specifically wanted to encourage the young people, youth to come to this line and learn. And also, not only should be restricted to scholars, we include the coin collectors also. Because they also should know what the what are the coins they are collecting, what is the importance and significance. So that can also be published. That was a thing. So it is a good thing and it is a great thing that our society for the past 32 years publishing the proceedings every year without break. It's a great achievement. Most of the society is it because of the guidance of Dr. Raja Vedigani, and also Krishnamurti Gandhi, who is no more with us. He was the force behind us to work. So with that objective, the society started. The society is, of course, we had more pandemonials, we had more discussions on each and every coin, especially in the other coins. That is, I guess, Arma is there. We just take one hour to take one letter and discuss. Like that, we discuss and publish the proceedings. So yeah, we know very well that is uh, even uh, the earliest coin of uh, Satakarani was whether it was a bilingual Tamil or uh, um, uh, Sanskrit or uh, Tamil or uh, Telugu. He could prove, he will only analyze and say that the letter is only Telugu. So that was one of the earliest Telugu letters according uh, uh, to his conclusion. And he also published it. That was one of the reasons why Telugu also got the status of the uh, at present you know, by the government of India. That is a good thing. But we know very well the coins of the collector and unpublished I told it is uh, the, it is very necessary, but it is also necessary to that is uh, get it into our history. That is a thing we are lacking. That is so far. There's so many kinds of India. Of course, Raja India and the Andhra itself has published so many kinds. That means uh, plenty of kinds. And in Tamil Nadu, if you go, Dr. Krishnamurti has brought out so many Sangamese kinds. So many people, even in, in Karnataka, also, yes, so many unknown kinds are published. But unfortunately, that is, history is not rewritten. It is on the basis of these kinds. First time, madam, we are very happy, the officer very happy to say. That is, you are linking it as a reconstruction of South Indian history. That what we wanted, we are insisting in all of the conferences that the numismatic evidences should be taken in rewriting or writing the history of the country or especially South India. This is not written. Even now, in the textbooks, if you go to the schools, they follow only the British rule or the British uh, period uh, these things in history. They don't say. That is, uh, our ancient kings, our emperors, uh, issued so much of coins. Of course, in uh, Andhra, there are very few. But in Tamil Nadu, if you go, they don't even mention about these Sankamese coins to uh, the and say, the great culture of our South India. So this is a very important, pertinent point. Of course, and also this, uh, I am very uh, indebted to this university for uh, linking our discovery, because as I told you, this, uh, there are more than 400 coins to 500 coins, new coins, which were not discovered so far in all these 30 years. You know, if, you, if you take a list, that is about more than 400 to 450 new coins have been discovered and published by us. But they are not going into this uh, history, writing the history and history book. That is a problem. So it is restricted, restricted only to our numismatics. So that is the reason why I appreciate this, uh, the efforts of this university. Of course, this is the first time we are seeing any encouragement, and also first time we, are, uh, we want such a the movement so that whatever the members, our members have, uh, have should go to the, uh, the history book, and also our history should be rewritten. So to that, uh, we are very much uh, uh, very, very, very thankful to you. Because uh, we are rewriting the history, if you, if you, if you don't take coins in, 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 of course, coins are more in, uh, important to us than even in some cases, even inscriptions. We may uh, even miss the inscriptions, the alien inscriptions discovered in, in Andhra, you know, the, the copper plate of 500, 550, it is missing. It is not even now seen, I, I, I know, I forgot the first name. Because recently we had a seminar. Of course, it's a Kalabala inscriptions from, uh, the, uh, of course, we're not far away. But this copper plate character of Kadapa district, 
that was 530, 530 or 540. It is uh, they are not found. Of course, it's published then. But where is the copper plate? It's not found. But it's not so in the case of uh, coins, because coins are permanent collections. That was known by the government of India also. You know, when the Antiquities Act, uh, Act came in 1972, it was implemented. Now, of course, they have notified some uh, Antiquities, which should be registered. Actually, the registering Antiquities should be um, uh, with them. And then a certificate will be given to the party. They are going to keep it. They cannot export it. They can keep it. It's sculptures, paintings, so many things have been included. In the, in the first notifications, they gave coins also, ancient coins. But uh, the, immediately it was felt, it was reported to the government of India at that time, 1973, that uh, people started melting the ancient coins because they were melts, scared of keeping the ancient coins and started melting. And that notification was withdrawn. That particular coins were withdrawn from the notifications. So coins can be kept, ancient coins can be kept with the private parties without registration. That law came, that rule came. After that, only we see this. So many coins are coming. If, of course, if they had insisted that the coins should be registered, uh, we may not give so much of coins because we, it is difficult to trace the coins also. Antiquities means sculpture can you can trace out if, even if it is quoted. But coins we cannot trace, small thing. So that was withdrawn by government of India in 1973 or 74 by other notifications. So that is the thing, importance of the uh, coin. So coins are with you because of this uh, notification also. So because of you bring, of course, uh, uh, we publish it. And also we are very proud to say that uh, we have got, uh, the society has published so far more than 450 coins. That is uh, the thing that we are always uh, very happy to welcome all of the young scholars to come and participate in because uh, uh, you know Yevi Narsi Murthy who has to come here was the Delta Sagi, they could not come because of his ailments. So, so many if, um, as the age is going on, the young gener next generation should uh, take that is our uh, intention also. So, I'm um, not exceeding time. I uh, just, just So, there is a thing. So, we will. Uh, um, uh, very much welcome all of you to make uh, all the two, next two uh, days. We will also not only presenting the uh, coins as they have given a topic for uh, that is legal of South Indian history. We'll see how we can link it. Some of the historians have also come. Of course, KP Ram is here to give the um, uh, uh, okay. general presence. We've got a very great general presence. Okay. General presence uh, address itself we have published about two years back. We got, of course, KP Ram is a competent scholar, and that should be, that be followed by his, Dr. Savandra. He's a uh, competent member, and she hosted the conference of choice in Tirupati. We all uh, had uh, so many papers presented and published. So she is going to be here. And uh, Mrs. Krishnamurthy uh, has also come here. We are all here to just to encourage the next generation people to, to know more about the coins and, uh, and also bring it to the history. Books. That is our uh, intention of the conference. So that will be successful. That is, uh, if we go on this class. Thank you all uh, for the of the society. Once again, we welcome you. Thank you all for the Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable uh, message on behalf of South Indian, excuse, uh, South Indian Mathematics Society. I welcome Anurada Lady Madam also to this uh, because she being our uh, highly inspiring person uh, in dreaming history from people's perspective, heritage and conservation of heritage. And uh, the Department also. Uh, in spite of her busy schedule, she is being here with us to be a, a, um, another inspiring person. Whenever we host the conferences, Madam will come to our rescue. I'm sorry, ma'am, for hosting this during the Ramadan uh, fest on the eve of Ramadan, uh, which we couldn't get the date uh, because we are having OER fest and later so many activities by the University. And uh, now uh, I call upon uh, Professor K.P. Raghuram, University of Hyderabad, who is very instrumental in the South Indian Numismatic Society, and bringing out several uh, research findings through his work, consistent work, and it was uh, to give a message. Uh, before uh, 
we'll we'll see uh, we'll uh, we invite our chief guest. Uh, we'll have the guest of honor's uh, presentations message after this evening. Uh, dignitary from the dais, the new mathematicians, historians, scholars. I deem it a great honor to be chosen to preside over this uh, 32nd annual conference of the South Indian Numismatic Society being held in this historic uh, city of Hyderabad. The session being held here is a significant event, considering the fact that uh, museums in uh, Hyderabad are reputed to hold more than some two, two and a half lakh uh, coins in their coffers. Uh, and uh, it is uh, rightly said that this is probably the second largest collection in the world, only after the collection of the uh, British uh, Museum. So the, uh, the evidential value of the coins um, is well known to be reiterated here. Coins are probably the, some of the smallest uh, objects that are found uh, in the excavations, explorations, etc. But in the uh, evidential value is uh, immense. At this point, I have to admit that uh, my contributions to the subject of numismatics is very meager, limited to a joint paper uh, with uh, you know, Dr. Joe Krim of uh, British Museum on a coin found from Kathapatnam in uh, uh, present uh, Balaji district uh, of uh, Andhra Pradesh. So this um, uh, uh, that find actually gave us a uh, lot of clues or uh, some definite evidence that uh, the Kathapatnam port, which was not till then known to us, was receiving uh, imported material from various uh, countries, including China and Southeast Asia, etc. So apart from this uh, Chinese coin, uh, in my full presentation, I would be talking about a few more coins uh, of the Satwahana dynasty and other dynasties. Uh, due to lack of time, uh, I won't be reading my whole paper now. I, I will be presenting it later. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to preside over this uh, session. So thank you. Thank you and uh, now I call upon the Navy and Treaty, we have this stuff that we are going to open the first two to this message. Good morning. Let's get your presentation from the Chief Guest of this country. Today's president of this function, Mr. Sudharan Ma'am, President Kumar, Pratyamuthi Garu, K.P. Rao Garu, Team of Social Science and Director EMRRC, Professor Vardyan Srinivas, Mr. Krishna Garu, and Dayaka. At the outset, on behalf of my own and university, we congratulate the Department of History to organizing this kind of Seminar, the first in which I think so in the university, right? because numistic uh, had the first in the world. Here, there is a seminar of numistic kinds and something, the subject also. Anyhow, I appreciate the Raja Redigaru to uh, taking the initiation <coughs> to concentrating on the topic, particularly in the numistic area of in his life. As a doctor, he served a lot, and also I surprised how sir was interesting in particular area of other than this one subject. You know, sir, even this age also, you are vibrating in the most of your working and dynamically and concentrating and moved to the university two, three times and discussed with this matter to harmonizing this seminar here. It's a great opportunity to the university to organize this seminar here. Really, it's a wonderful to us to know a new subject in this area. You know, very much thankful to the SNIS. And the delegates who are participating from various parts of this South India as well as the other areas, and also 
or deans of the various faculties, directors, and research scholars, teaching and non teaching staff, and invitees who are attending here. A warm welcome to those who are actually coming here to participate in this uh, seminar. I hope that this seminar will be a great success and come up a good uh, uh, whatever the recommendations or whatever the proceedings have to come in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Faculty of Social Science and the Director to EMRC. Respected President, Professor T. Shivaraniya, Senior Professor, Department of History and Director of GRC, and Andhul Chief Guest and my teacher, Professor V. Kishan Dagar. Most respected doctor in news mathematics, Dr. Raja Retigaru, Professor K. P. Ravgaru, our uh, registrar, Professor A. V. Aran Retigaru, Dr. Radhakshna Garu, Dr. Sakyamurthy Garu, Dr. Zidayakar Garu. Good morning, you all. I welcome you all to this uh, today's seminar on numismatics, reconstruction of South Indian history and uh, 32nd Annual Conference of South Indian Numismatic Society. Our uh, Department of History is uh, one of the popular subjects in our uh, university. Every year, almost uh, 35,000 students join in our UG program. Department of History offers uh, different kinds of courses like uh, UG program and PG program and PhD. Previously, we used to offer in MPhil also. Now we are off, we are off, we offer uh, one diploma also, diploma in heritage culture, culture and heritage tourism. So we prepare course material for our students. Our approach is mainly from bottom to top. We concentrate on socio-economic. In our courses also, you can find in our course material in uh, PG level, Socio-economic history of India from earliest times to 700 to 12, and uh, socio-economic history of medieval India, social history of modern India, and uh, even previous also, even UG program also, we offer 12 courses in different areas. Like we concentrate on socio-economic areas particularly. So in every subject, uh, we, uh, we uh, give main source, uh, we importance to our sources. We give separate lessons uh, to uh, for uh, sources particularly on numismatics and other uh, archaeological sources and uh, literary sources. Here, thank you very much and uh, I welcome you all uh, South Indian Numismatics uh, Association members and other uh, delegates of this seminar. Actually, numismatics is the study of kinds and its role in reconstructing the history of South India. Numismatics is not merely about collecting shiny tokens of currency. It is a discipline that unveils the stories engraved on metal, the tales of civilizations, rulers, trade routes, and societal structures. In South India, where history is as diverse as its landscapes, numismatics serves as a crucial tool for historians to piece together the puzzle of the past. The coins unearthed from archaeological sites are not just artifacts, but windows to bygone eras offering insights into the socio-economic, political, and cultural fabric of ancient civilizations. Firstly, the coins minted by various dynasties serve as invaluable mar markers of political transitions and power shifts. From the Shatavanas to the Cholas, each dynasty left its imprint on the currency, bearing symbols, inscriptions, and portraits of rulers. By studying these coins, historians can trace the rise and fall of kingdoms the expansion of territories, and the interplay of regional powers. Secondly, numismatics sheds light on the economic landscape of ancient South India. 
coins not only circulated as a medium of exchange but also reflected the economic policies trade relations and prosperity of a region the presence of foreign coins in south indian excavations indicates that extent of trade networks and cultural exchanges with distant lands furthermore the inscriptions on coins provide valuable data on taxation coinage systems and fiscal administration enabling historians to understand the economic dynamics dynamics of the time moreover numismatics plays a pivotal role in unraveling the religious and cultural mail of ancient south india many coins feature religious motifs motifs symbols and deities offering insights into the religious beliefs and practices prevalent in different periods for instance the coins of the pallavas adorn with images of vishnu and shiva reflect the patronage of hinduism during the reign similarly the coins of the cholas and the pandyas depict scenes from epic narratives like the ramayana and the mahabharata highlighting the cultural ethos of the era in addition to political economic and cultural narratives numismatics also contributes to understanding technological advancement and artistic development in ancient south india the craftsmanship exhibited on coins ranging from intricate designs to sophisticated mining techniques at least attests to the skill and ingenuity of artisans and metallurgical of air however it is essential to acknowledge the challenges inherent in interpreting numismatics evidence the de- uh, decipherment of inscriptions the identification of rulers and the attribution of coins to specific periods require meticulous scholarship and interdisciplinary collaborations nonetheless with advancement in technology and me- methodologies the field of numismatics continues to evolve offering fresh perspective and discoveries numismatics serves as a prism through which we can glimpse into the rich tapestry of south indian history by studying coins we not only reconstruct the cr- chronicles of kingdoms and empires but also appreciate the complexities of ancient societies as we delve deeper into the realm of numismatics let us continue to unravel in the mysteries of the past and enrich our understanding of the civilizations that have shaped the course of history in south india thank you very much thank you for giving this opportunity thank you thank you sriman for bringing some light on the department history as well as uh, the numismatics for the significance of the coins and the reconstruction of history. And uh, uh, may I now call upon uh, our uh, chief guest, Professor B. Kishanov, sir. Keynote director, or first we have the keynote address. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, may I now call upon Professor uh, Raja Rikidaru. No, to the guys. And uh, one more aspect of uh, Dr. Raja Ritigaru, you might not be knowing about, he was instrumental in getting the sclerosis Vimukti Vedika as a president of that uh, hesitation for quite a long time. Uh, he was heading and uh, liberated most of the uh, villages who were affected with sclerosis and with his interventions. Uh, many more activities of the surgeries or the plantations or water plants and all have happened. And uh, I'm very happy to be associated with him also in that moment. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you. Yes, let's listen to his kind of address of the very significant and veteran doctor, Sajjara Kivar. Professor Sudharani Gairu, Professor Kishan Rao Gairu, and other dignitaries on the dais and uh, distinguished participants. I thank the university for asking me to give this uh, keynote address. I was just thinking that uh, what should be my address to this uh, gathering. Then I said to myself that I will talk about what were the contributions of ancient coins to the Satavana history. You all know that Satavana was one of the most illustrious dynasties to rule in ancient India. They left behind such great works of art as the famous Sanchi and Amravati Stupas, 
and Rakka temples in Western India. The great school of sculpture known for illustrative archaeology flourished for three to four hundred years, and many of their Buddhist stupas are its shining examples. Satavana period was also productive for some of the literary works of outstanding merit, such as Gata Saptasati of the Hala, Katantra Vakarna of the Sarvavarma, Bruhat Kata of Gunadiya, Kata Sari Sagara of the Somadeva, and Bruhat Kata Manjari of Kshemendra, and so on. If one were to look at the old historical maps made out by the Oxford and Princeton universities, you will be amazed to see that in one BC world map you see, almost one third of India was ruled by Satavanas. And then you look at the next map of the world map made out by the Oxford University, that in 200 AD, Satavanas were ruling almost half of India and so on. And there was a wonderful trade with Rome those days. And I was told that it was one of the most peaceful and prosperous times in 5,000 year Indian history and so on. Naturally, we wanted to study about the Satavahanas and what are the three important source materials that are available to us. One is the literary works, second are the inscriptions, third are the coins and so on. When it comes to inscriptions, literary works, we have only five Puranas to fall back on. And then most of those Puranas contain conflicting information and so on. And, uh, you know, tally of the other, the Satavana kings are there, who succeeded whom, where they started, you know, they don't tally with each other and so on. So that there are many conflicting things in the literary works and so on. When it comes to inscriptions, there are about 35 only inscriptions right from 1937. 30, 1837 was the first inscription of Satavanas was found. But all these years, and we found only another 30 or so and so on. But I was happy to know that the last couple of months, we found out two inscriptions of Satavanas from Karim Nagar. They belong to Hakusri. He was the Prince Hakusri, son of the Satavahana. King Satakarni and then Naganika. And those two inscriptions were found. One was very close to Kot Lingala, Mukarao Peta, it is called. And another was in the Gattu Singaram, just about 10 days back. And this adds up to the, when it comes to the inscriptions and so on. When it comes to the inscriptions and coins, they are a lot more reliable because they were issued when the kings were alive and so on. But when it comes to Puranas, most of them were written centuries later and so on. So many inaccuracies crept into them and so on. And then, then I was just looking at what were all the things we learned from the coins and so on. The great historian Maramanda Ramara was giving a talk to the Madras University in 1959. He was talking about Satavanas and so on. He said, I have to rely on only few literary works and then only 24 inscriptions were known at that time and so on. But when it comes to the coins, I have 57,000 coins which I have studied in various museums and private collections and so on. So much of information has come to us from the coins and so on. And just you would be surprised to know that we didn't know the correct name of the founder of the Satavahana dynasty. Chimuka Satavahana was his correct name and so on. Puranas give you different names and so on. But you just look at the coin, it is Chimuka Satavahana. When Satavahana coins were found without the Chimuka name and so on, there was a big controversy, arguments and so on. Who is this Satavahana who is not mentioned in Puranas? But one coin tells you the whole story and so on. It is Rano Chimuka Satavahana. Just one kind tells you that it was the Prakrit language. He was the king and so on. His name was Chimuka, and he was the founder of the Satavahana dynasty and so on. So that from the coins, we are learning a lot of things and so on. And Puranas didn't tell you exactly whom did he succeed and so on. 
there was a Samagopa king ruling from Kotlingala. He succeeded Samagopa. There are no two other opinions and so on. Samagopa was followed by Chimuka Satavana. What was Chimuka before he became a king? He was a Maharati. He was an official. During Ashokan time, there used to be officials called Mahasenapati, Maharati, Mahagramika, and so on. So he was a, an official, was a great, must have been, and then he starts and so on. In Sanati excavations, we find kinds of Maharati Chimuka, also Rano Chimuka, and so on. So these kinds told us that he was an official, then who later becomes a king and so on. And those kinds were found proving that the Chimuka was the king who was a Maharati earlier and so on. Similarly, so many other things we have come to know from the kinds and so on. And there was a little controversy earlier. Puranas tell you that they were Andras and so on. But nowhere in inscriptions and coins, there is no word Andra is there and so on. It is only Satavana and so on. So Satavanas are Andras are one and the same and so on. Same Satavana king was there and so on. And then, then when the first time the silver coins of the Satavanas were found, you know, only later kings issued few coins and so on. They said, no, no, only when Gautam Putra defeated Nahapana, they got silver and they started issuing silver coins. Then simply, you know, we did the X-ray diffraction studies of the kinds of Nahapana and also Satavana. And the ore was entirely different and so on. And there was a plenty of silver kinds are available in every excavation, you know, in 420 kinds of, of punch mark kinds were found in Karimun. And Isanapalli the other day we found punch mark kinds and so on. Every excavation we find punch mark kinds. So punch mark kinds were in such a circulation and so on, there was no need for Satwanas to issue silver kinds. And when they issued, did issue after defeating the Western Kshatras, then their ore was different, their manufacture was different, and so on. And then, then other thing we came to know from the coins is that Satwanas were matriarchal in character. They respected their mothers and so on. And Gautami Putra, he was a Satakani was his name, but he calls himself as Gautami Putra. And his son Pudumavi, who calls himself as was his Putra and so on. And there was another one, takes the Harith, Harith name and so on. So that respect, but even when a king calls himself as a Rano, he would put Sri in front of his name and so on. You see 2,300 year old coins and so on. Every king calls himself Siri, that is Sri. That tradition of putting Sri name in front of the thing also, you know, this kind of a thing we learn from the coins and so on. So that we have come to know so many things about the coins, which were the metals which were available, what were the ores which were available, and also the language and so on. Of course, there is a little controversy about the silver coins of Satwanas. The practice was there on the upward side, river side, whether there was an early Telugu or Tamil, you know, you could discuss about. But even the Satwana started making changes in the Brahmi Lipi, even on the coins and so on. Writing Va on the practice the upward side was different from the Va which was written on the other side, which was supposed to be Telugu and so on. So that they started to make changes and so on. And the France kinds, we have come to know that Brahmi had only 40 letters. Mm -hmm. Telugu had a 56 letters, and Telugu Kannada has a 56 letters. Mm -hmm. They have added, they have enriched the Telugu language by adding new letters and so on. And Kalyana Chalukya kind, we see that, then we will know that by 8th century, 9th century, they completed that process of completing the Telugu uh, script with 56 letters and so on. So like that, so many aspects of coins we have come to know by studying the coins and so on. I only advise these younger people to take up the study of the coins because they give you the correct information like inscriptions and so on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um,
At the outset, I'd like to thank uh, the most revered sister, Professor Sudharani, seminar director, and one of the senior professors of the Department of History, who has invited me to be in the midst of all of you. I wanted to be a participant like anybody, and they made me to be a guest of honor. And after coming here, they wanted me to achieve this. And they thought, oh, God plans for every life. And they to die. Thank you for that. I'm grateful to the authorities of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Open University, taking the name of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sita Ram Rao, Professor A.V.R. Andredi, a registrar of the university, and my most esteemed uh, colleagues from the South Indian Numismatic. And in particular, with Professor K.P. Rao, and Dr. A.V. Narasimha Murthy, the General Secretary, South Indian Numismatic Society, uh, Professor Srinivas Vardhanan, Green Faculty of Souls and Sciences, ever smiling, always active, alert, and try to be in touch with her. everyone in his life, walks of life. And our Mr. Dr. G. Dayakar, the local secretary of this national seminar and head of the department of Dr. P. Arvo University, Sri Radha Krishnagaru, general uh, and, uh, manager, from the Bank of India, and my most revered Dr. D. Raja Redigal, President of South Indian Numismatic Society, who is a guiding spirit, always on his toes. He toils his work day in and day out, never relax. He doesn't allow anybody to relax. In pursuit of the research, more in particular on the numismatic society of India. <laughs> the great speaker, writer, researcher, and a visionary, and he has a mission in his life to see that the numismatic society of India and the South India takes to its hands. I'm grateful and thankful to you all for having given me an opportunity to be in the midst of all of you, and more in particular, in the presence of Dr. Raja Radikar. My voice is feeble. I'm not well for the past four or five days. But yet, I wanted to see all of you. Never miss the opportunity. I'm a believer of God. I always believe that God plans everyone for everything. If an opportunity is given here, it means God has ordained that you should be there in front of everyone. That makes me feel very comfortable. Otherwise, I will feel very bad that I have lost the opportunity. I never miss an op any opportunity in it. Day to day life, all that comes, all that rolls into you, it is only because of the grace of God, what I personally feel. And I have most severe friends here from 
مولانا اردو یونیورسٹی پروفیسر and many other friends who have assembled here in this hall and i have to thank them so here in there who has been a close uh, colleague supporter of many programs in our universities and along with him ganesh trusty is also here and uh, my another revere sister shakuntala i call professor shakuntala but when i call sister she is shakuntala to me so i pay my respects and another revered person is our professor venkade venkatai garu the former registrar of dr ambedkar university i know each one of them personally and i have another great sister dr anandha the lady and uh, many other who are here who uh, have joined in this particular program to share their thoughts and ideas to see that the uh, program is conducted perfectly and it can take into the heights to remember all that past what is really meant for as you all know that look back to look forward look back to look forward so what is that we are looking for what is that we are looking back for what is we are looking in the past is a question to be judged by ourselves we talk about many subjects many facets of our history our culture our archaeology our heritage our tourism and many other things what it has been there in the disciplines of social sciences in the disciplines of arts and all that combinedly it takes us to have an interrelated interrelation between one subject or the other and that will definitely make us understand the sequences coordination and cooperation what it is being there in the subject and ultimately it makes us to mark a particular program and that is nothing but the coordination between the disciplines we have interdisciplines we have interdisciplinary courses and all that is nothing but a coordination between the disciplines only to see that you have a comprehensive outlook of a subject more of us we are concerned about a subject of course we are historians we are archaeologists we are numismatics we have museums and museologists we have we have epigraphies we have many other facets of our historical perspectives which can really make us feel and we have heritage aspect which is also be considered one of the prime and most important and our dr anandha reddy she is a pioneer for historical heritage which she struggles hard on behalf of the intact so i am saying all this subject is there in the book all the ideas and philosophies what we learn from the book is only a theoretical aspect but what we have to remember is all those seniors who are here on the dais and off the dais who are veterans in their own field they are themselves knowledgeable that there is a encyclopedia for everyone if at all you touch them and talk to them are we really making that effort to reach each, each and every individual every one thinks that i am having more knowledge about every aspect than others but my feeling is each one they have immense treasure of knowledge if at all you touch and talk to them you will have a better understanding of the subject than yourself that is very important in the 
uh, lifestyle, what we are leading it. If at all I don't know about geography, I have to consult a professor of geography. If I don't know about the antiquities, I must consult about all that what it has been preserved in museums. And what we have to ascertain is each one how it is going to be related. We have knowledge theoretically through books, which is written based on primary sources or secondary sources. Sometimes if at all we cross check the message or the written book, what it is conveyed, sometimes there may be mistake or there may be a wrong dating or some kind of information, what it is furnished might really doesn't give us proper care and concern. If that is the case, we have to cross check with other discipline and try to assimilate yourself what exactly it is required, what exactly it can contain and what exactly we can really matter about. And this is how a teacher who is also a researcher, who is also trying to train his own students or scholars in their own way, if I do not know, I must consult somebody and see that the student is put on the wrong, right track. But a scholar should be given the right direction. All that is possible <laughs> only when we come down a step and then go meet each and every one, maybe seniors, maybe junior also. The junior can give us more input than sometimes the senior person who doesn't work in the field work. And this is interrelated. The field work is interrelated with that of the numismatics. And the numismatics, many of our speakers have already given the information that numismatics is the source of inspiration is a source for understanding the past, is a source for presenting the facts and figures, what it has been imbibed, what it has been imposed on the coins, maybe upwards or maybe reverse, and each one figure, what it is there in the, it contains information about the past, whether, whether it's a coronation, or whether it is an Ashwamedha, or whether it is something connected with the day-to-day -day affairs. And if you correlate it, there were many dynasties in the Dakkan area, in South India, and each dynasty has ruled many years, more than 350, 50 years, 70 years, 100 years, and many years. If at all we go on researching all these things, even for one year of a particular ruler, you will know immensely. And you have historicity of the coins beginning from the uh, age old, which you uh, try to rather move out from one place to the other, which that can be considered to be in Telugu, what we call it is uh, 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 some kind of coinage, which is which matters a lot, which can take us to, to the heights. And ultimately, in those days, these people, those who were, even in the tribal stages, they used to carry these coinage in the form of putting all that in the hands or in the bangles or in the necklace and move around wherever it was necessary, it will definitely carry them and take care of them what is required for them. So such kind of coinage which are there in the ancient times, was there in the medieval times during the Muslim, and it was there in the Mughal times, and it was there in the uh, European times, and then later the modern times. So coinage is a rhyme matter which contains, which matters a lot, and the coinage gives you an input and historicity of every aspect of it. And each symbolic, whether it is Hindu religion or Muslim religion, whatever religion it combines, but the patronization of the rulers, which matters a lot when embossing is being done on the reverse of the upwards of the coin, and it gives you a proper information. So it goes on, copper coins are there, bronze coins are there, gold coins are there, and even the lid was there. And earlier to that, Gavalu, what we call in Telugu, uh, that was also a part of it. And that has taken several years up to the Harappan industrial civilization, which has made them to move around one place to the other. And it has given you a long, long history of the past. And that contains a lot. So when we compare the richness of that, when you talk about lead, when you talk about the copper, when you copper the silver, when you copper the uh, gold, that contains 
the richness of the ruler that contain the richness of the place the geographical connection and that contain how best that can be really matter that how these distributions can be done in the um, region wherever they were living so these are all related whether it is cultural relations or whether it is geographical relation that is also connected with the territorial boundaries of a ruler who has ruled and that territorial boundary which he has strengthened and try to expand it also matters how far the coin has spread from one area to the other it also matters how the ruler has really made that and you have inter trade relations and you have number of ports all over in india or two and many other places and we have inter trade relations with the romans and the rome coin romans and rome gold coin has come into india and they try to gold roll that gold coins of the roman into india and in vice versa they have tried to take something like an exchange offer which was there in the earlier times about barter system so the barter system continued for a long time in the exchange of goods in proportion to the produce they try to make it even at a later time that is that will give you a, a long history of each and every aspect if at all we look into that dimension you will have you will have a number of uh, ideas uh, which we can really matter and numismatics numismatics plays a major role in constructing the history whether you reconstructing history or constructing history i have no idea about it but every historian every archaeologist every person in all walks of life they have to put their efforts in coordinating with all that and try to make an effort to see that every source of inspiration source which is available in different forms uh, you have to collect you have to coordinate you have to combine together and if there are any changes in the date or any changes in the political vicissitudes or in any, any change of the names of the rulers it should be cross checked with other sources without doing that what we think what we write and what we mention about the new management sometimes it may not work we we'll have to cross check and sometimes we may fail to identify a coin and sometimes the identification of the coin can be also combined with other sources so that will definitely give you because you have numismatics you have inscription many epigraphical evidences are there my friend surya kumar is here i'm just seeing him now i have to appreciate that what kind of help he used to uh, give to the scholars whenever there is any suggestion which is to make we have dr darira another sister of mine she is the director of our state archives telangana state is a dynamic director who are working for the institution so strongly so committed and dedicated she is also one of the member who always passes on the archival material wherever it is required whenever there is any cross check to be done and i have to pay my respects to her for being here in this during the ramadan time i really uh, feel very proud that uh, all my uh, most revered personalities from south india and all india are here in the new mathematics and i thank uh, again for sunna rani for having me having given me an opportunity to be in the midst of all of you i really uh, thank uh, the authorities of dr b r ambedkar university and thank all the members of the delegates who have taken so much pains to join in this uh, program in support of uh, uh, my sister professor sudharani and uh, uh, srini professor uh, srinivas and uh, our friend here dr g dayakar and the members of uh, south indian uh, south indian numismatics society and the president and secretary and all the tweet members and my uh, so kp rao has cut short his program for a half his keynote address but i thank professor kp rao he's another great archaeologist who is here in the midst he is always seen on the field why i am saying so much formally that because i had the good fortune of meeting all these people going with them understanding them and trying to learn from them and trying to take their help 
in making my scholars, my students to go to them and but for friendship, it is not possible. Only friendship will definitely help us to see that our goal and our mission, our aim will be fulfilled. Not for ourselves. We have to work for our scholars. We have to support them. We have to see that every aspect of it should be taken care of in their endeavors. And I have to pay my respect to all those people who have been doing it. Here, I would like to remember Professor Dr. V. V. Krishna Shastri Garu, Dr. Raja Reddy Garu, Virendar, and many of uh, Sivanagar Reddy, and many of them, they worked uh, with Krishna Shastri Garu. And they tried to bring about a volume on the antiquities, uh, uh, the antiquities of the uh, so what are the titles are? Uh, science of Antiquities. Jitan Babu was compiling about the whole thing. So when you just have a glimpse of it, and you just take the titles of every book and the author's book, some knowledge you have gained. So are we having time to go to the library or to the documentation or to go to any other place where we can just shock out and try to put all that into our mind. So not to be satisfied what we have as secondary sources, but we have to go to the primary sources. As you all know that one of the historian, Ranke, you always used to say that any researcher, if at all they don't go to the spot and write history, then it is a mistake being done by them. He suggests that every scholar, every historian, whoever is interested, must go to the spot, write down everything, and come back to the knowledge. So, therefore, these things are matters. And one more suggestion I would like to make uh, that you know all those sources what we have collected, numismatics, keep a data of it and put it in an exhibition form or exhibit, or try to develop a museum from their own. And I have the good fortune of working with Salarjan Museum as an advisory board member of Salarjan Museum with the help of all my friends. Anita is here. And uh, I appreciate uh, their spirits and uh, work uh, culture of that. And uh, these objects, what we have in Salarjan Museum, speaks volumes about volumes about the historicity, historical geography, historical geography, every aspect of it that makes us to learn. So every day we are learning, every moment we are learning, and when while learning, we should not miss the opportunity of being a participant, being a member of this organization, and member of this kind of association to learn about the Numismatic Society of India. I welcome Professor Vijay Babu, who has come from Warangal just now. Thank each one of you for having patience with me. I took a little time, uh, Professor Sadarani. Uh, because you said that I am chief guest, therefore I have to take time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. You are you are always inspiring us to do many things. Thank you so much for your address. Uh, yeah, before uh, I give my concluding brief remarks, uh, we have the. Uh, in case of the Journal of South Indian Hispanic Society, I request all the Virendra Garu Srinivas to come to the release of the Rajiv Srinivas Amma. Please come and do the honors of releasing the journal brought up by South Indian Hispanic Society. Okay. I request Jarina Varvi, Madam. Anuradha Reddy Garu, please. Danish Mohindra, please. Jabab, Manoj, sir. Manoj, sir. Jay Krishna, sir, please. Ayyam. I 
Maharaj Lakshmi Garu, Office of Vishnu Murthy, sir, who has done lifetime service to the numismatics. सबको आगे प्रोग्राम कॉपी हार्ड कॉपी वन साइड इज Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Alex Chagall. I'll be uh, you see the director. Yeah, I was a curator. Contributed, I believe. One of the museum. Yeah. To introduce the John Fender, Mr. John Fender. मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू <laughs> so we are in Helen. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, yeah. Adi, Mike. Mike on. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. After my presentation, I'm going to station. Yes. So dignitaries on the dais. This is Radha Lakshmi Krishna Murthy, my beloved friend, Dr. Virendra. and danish moin and all other delegates fellow delegates and ladies and gentlemen i have been given an opportunity to introduce the journal of our august society studies in south indian coins so we are in the 32nd volume now we have about is 30 volume 30 earlier <coughs> so 1991 this journal has been started without any interruption we have published around 30 volumes now only in this at during the time of corona that is 21 22 we have missed two volumes otherwise it is regular and in this volume we have 17 articles the first one is about our president's address it's, it speaks about the 
inscriptional coins, retired coins of the Tamil Nadu. Uh, Professor Rajivelu, he is retired professor from Tamil University in Davao. Prior to that, there was no inscriptional coins found in South India. And this was the, <coughs> what we call Dr. R. Krishnamurti's great effort that he has come out with many coins of, inscribed coins of South India, that is especially at the Sangam Age Pandya coin and Chola Estera coin, and also some chieftains, Malayamans, and the, on Antipati there is one quote. We have many inscriptional coins found in South India, especially in Tamil Nadu. Those coins have been discussed in the first presence letters. The second and third articles are speaking about the Roman coins, Roman coins found in India and their imitations. So we are, we are all well aware that there is a place called Lakanballe in Andhra Pradesh. So in that place, thousands of Roman silver coins have been found. They are all lying in the state, state government museum, archaeology, Hyderabad. The speciality is that all those coins are having a chisel mark. So on the bust of the Roman emperor, there is a chisel cut. So those days, these coins have come to India for trade. So our traders are very intelligent and they used to check those coins whether they are genuine or it's fake coins. So they used to cut on the first bust so they can expose a large area, large portion on the coin that they can come to know that the inner is a precious metal made of silver or gold. So the Roman coins are very precious and especially in South India we have thousands of coins found and all our museums from Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, and Karnataka, thousands of coins are stored. And then third article, <coughs> we have an article on Rashtrakuta King Amogavasha. Prior to that, there was no coins published for Rashtrakuta, though they were very famous and then they were contemporary to Guptas, Vakatakas, and they have, there is no coin that Particularly, we cannot attribute them that this is a specific coin issued by Rashtrakutas, but we are very happy now. There are two, three articles have come out with very specific inscriptions about the Rashtrakuta rulers, Amogavasha. So one of those coins were published in this journal, that is by Dr. T. Ravi Sankar, a retired epigraphist, Mysore. And then the next coin is of Klothunga the first, is published by Dina Sarasan. And we have three Chinese articles coins, Chinese coins found in South India. So those three Chinese coins articles follows next. After that, we have three more articles by Dr. Raja Reddy. So all those coins, three articles speaks about the gold punch mark coins found in Andhra Pradesh. It's a very specific series and nobody has worked so far. There are thousands of coins lying in the Andhra Pradesh government museums with punch mark symbols. And we could not even read those scripts satisfactorily so far. It's very difficult to read also because um, sometimes we will get the full legend and sometimes it will be off the plan. And if anybody is coming out with the full project, Madam Arani Garu, I'm requesting you to have a student for the, to work on this series. It's a very important series. So thousands of punch mark coins are lying in this with Telugu script and we have to come out with the comprehensive volume on those punch mark coins. Those three articles have been published by Dr. Raja Redikar, who is appearing here. And then we have one article by Samarth, the queen of uh, post Nayakas from Mangaluru. So that Samarth has published in that paper. And one is by Priya, there is another article by post Vijayanagar coin. And we have notes and news at the end. And there are some obituaries we have Lost our veteran numismatist on Mr. Sashi Kangji Dopate. He is from Mumbai and he is no more now. So we have an obituary note for him at the end. And these are the main things we have in this volume. So it speaks about somewhere around 164 pages, 64, 65 pages with many articles and good illustrations. And this conference, this uh, seminar also, we will be having more papers. He said already 30 papers are there in the line. I don't know how we are going to complete within these two days. <laughs> and online papers are there. That's very more dangerous. 
online you cannot even control them and they were going on speaking and we could not do it so those things we have to tackle now only we have left with one and a half days so thank you thank you for assigning me to, to introduce this channel thanks a lot and this, yeah, i have to call for Thank you, sir. Thank you, Radha Krishna. Uh, now I have to do the honors of concluding remarks as being the president. Uh, I don't know how many roles I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful uh, session uh, with uh, uh, the veterans uh, speaking out on the numismatics and um, we have very illustrious um, and uh, renowned uh, numismatists, uh, Raja Redigaru and uh, Chief Guest Krishan uh, who inspired with his uh, illuminating address. And uh, everyone uh, in our childhood days, like, you know, we dream of collecting coins. So everyone is a kind of numismatics, I could say, in the budding, uh, in uh, childhood. Like, you know, whenever we see the coins, we tend to, you know, collect them. And uh, that, that if it becomes a habit and it becomes a passion, it becomes, uh, and then one becomes a researcher. And uh, that kind of, you know, uh, we have a now number of people um, uh, in that uh, aspect and uh, doing research on the coins and the numismatics is a wonderful work which you know South Indian Numismatic Society is doing for the past uh, three decades uh, with a uh, dedication and determination and we could see that evidence through the journal which we have seen just now released and uh, kudos to the uh, SINS uh, uh, SNS uh, for uh, bringing out this, uh, doing the wonderful on this work of you know preserving the culture and uh, uh, giving to the next generations and uh, uh, notable discussions on South Indian uh, our uh, researchers unveiled a treasure trove of numismatic um, artifacts and uh, this research and uh, some of the names of the like you know history being silenced about the women and I could just mention about few of the women who has. Uh, a power to issue the coins and the name, starting with the Naganika, who issued a coin on her knee. And uh, just now, Achieve this was mentioning that Satavahana kings, uh, they, are, they took the names of the mothers and uh, uh, they are depicting the matrilineal society there. And um, Rani, the Queen Didda of Kashmir, and uh, Rani Ahilyabai of Maratha, and uh, Rudrama, you all know. Um, how uh, the ruler, the province of a ruler, as and uh, uh, her attire and her uh, weapons and everything is depicted to the coins and Mangamal of Madhra Naika dynasty. So, this I'm just trying to present tomorrow in my paper uh, because my area is modern Indian history, um, just uh, knowing some things through the history readings about the numismatics and all. So we have read a lot about them, but I just want to link it to the historical uh, how women being projected in the coins and how the history of the half of the population uh, still needs research. So I'm just venturing, uh, sorry to say that though it's not my discipline, but I'm just trying my uh, uh, attempt to present it before you tomorrow. And uh, coming to the last point is uh, challenges, how to overcome. So we have a number of challenges in the preservation, in the interpretation, and the funding finally is the uh, biggest challenge we, the numismatics, uh, fa do face. And uh, because preservation is uh, you know, degradation or the kind of you know, expertise required for uh, doing this, and the interpretation also, um, we have very uh, limited number of numismatics uh, in, in India. And uh, the kind of research is also, is uh, it's happening, but linking as uh, said by all our uh, resource persons, uh, in linking with the historical uh, narrations and the historical 
uh, evidences and uh, this is somewhat you know is to be done more and the government funding is depleting uh, day by day so uh, on this aspect uh, more and more funding is required and um, we can overcome these challenges with the dedication and uh, collaboration among the historians and the uh, numismatists and the uh, archaeologists and uh, the fashionable, uh, like, you know, the, the researchers who have passion towards retrieving history. And uh, this collaborative efforts yield a better result. And so that, you know, uh, and multidisciplinary research so that we can give our younger generation a treasure trove of uh, historical yeah, evidences, uh, which we can do. That is a contribution we can do to the society. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, for, for bearing with us with the long session of inaugural session. And uh, yeah, we have five more sessions. Uh, we'll try to squeeze in the time. And um, if possible, we can have uh, parallel sessions also. So uh, now, uh, last uh, uh, but not uh, last but one is a felicitation to the esteemed guests, esteemed guests who have come to our university and uh, being with us, uh, pairing their valuable time. I call upon Srinivas and Dayaka. Yeah, yeah, okay. Radha Krishna sir will do the honors of you know, felicitations. So this is our duty to honor our dignitaries and every year that South Indian Society Society honors our dignitaries with peace and salt. So I have been given this choice to turn to announce these dignitaries now. So I request Madam Rajalakshmi Krishnamurti to felicitate Madam Sudha Rani. The professor of history. Sir, please let the guest be. No, I'm the first. No. Please, please. Don't sir. worry, madam. Don't no, no, worry. No, please. Ladies, first we will go with no. ladies. No, no, you right. Hey, it's meant to host room, sir. No, you see, no, you see. Don't worry. So, seminar director, senior professor of history, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University. Sir, chief, please, ma'am. Chief guest, first. No, you see, don't worry. Because, sir, please forgive me. No, please. We'll uh, please, sir, and later. I'm here. Why do you accept it? Why do you accept it? And our chief guest. Professor V. Kishan Rao, former registrar, Osmania University, will be felicitated by our secretary, Dr. Raja Ritikaru. Please, Dr. Raja Ritikaru, please felicitate our chief guest, Professor V. Kishan Rao, former registrar, Osmania University, Hyderabad. Yeah, the next comes our session, uh, this uh, uh, president of this conference. Dr. K.P. Rao, Department of History, University of Hyderabad. So who will be felicitated by Dr. P. Satyamurti, the editor of South Indian Numismatic Society Journal. Dr. Rezaradigar is felicitating him. And next, we are going to the registrar. A.V.R.N. Reddy, Professor A.V.R.N. Reddy, registrar. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University, Dr. Sati Murthy, sir, will be felicitating him with Paul. And next will be, in this order, Professor Srinivas Vadana. So he will be honored by Professor Sati Murthy with Saul. And next in this line is our president, Dr. Dime Raja Reddy. I request Sakuntala, madam. Please come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, professor, yeah. retired professor from Usman, uh, Venkateshwar University. She is my professor also. 
So I did my pre PhD from Osman University. She is my professor also. Yeah. So Professor Sri Aguntala Madam will honor Dr. Demi Raja Reddy. The next comes Dr. G. Dayakar, local secretary, Southern. No, no. Madam, I don't see them, sir. Madam, contributed by the On the point. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Achas, there is an uh, important announcement. So we have a program list here with uh, many uh, people who are going to present their papers. And those who have not given their papers in this, I would like to request you to give it to Dr. Ramamurthy. So Mr. Ramamurthy, Dr. Ramamurthy will collect those papers and we will organize for your talk. So those who are not given in this main list, that they can give their papers to Dr. Ramamurthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for all the questions uh, from Dr. Brown. We are a medical open university. We would like to felicitate our guests here. Yeah. To begin with, Professor Kishan Raogarni, Elstead Chayawal Siddhika, Srinivas Tayakarni, request this. Sir, Thank you. Dr. Raja Redigarni, Helsinki. and uh, Sachimurthy Garni, Health State University. Radha Krishna Garni. A guest of honor, uh, registrar, AVR and ready. <laughs> <laughs> Department of History. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep this. I'll keep this in that sir. Thank you. Uh, kindly. Yeah. Uh, I call upon uh, Dr. G. Dagan, the Department of History and the local secretary, to the formal vote of thanks. It is my honor and proud privilege to purpose a formal vote of thanks to conclude the inaugural session of this national seminar. 
and 32nd annual conference of south indian numismatic society i am thankful to dr raja reddy garu president south indian numismatic society for delivering the keynote address sir your vast knowledge and expertise was evident in our keynote address and i am sure that the delegates were enriched with your address sir thank you sir my thanks <coughs> also due to the guest of honor and uh, to this uh, chief guest professor vikshan rao sir member archives advisory board national archives of new delhi your talks was very enlightening sir and uh, sir as a guiding light for uh, for the discussion sir thank you i thank professor ap rao garu honorary professor university of hyderabad for taking fine of his busy schedule to be here with us <laughs> and he is delivered as good messages for us thank you very much sir <clears throat> i also thanks to satyamurthy garu uh, he was given a valuable information regarding the fines i am very much thankful to you sir my thanks are due to the uh, dean faculty of social science professor sinwas odanam sir for providing in valuable guidance is the visitors of the event i am very much thankful to you sir i am also thankful to our senior professor the department of history professor sudarani madam for his busy and constant uh, for his busy schedule he has came to here and preside over the session i am very much thankful to you madam i thank radhakrishna garu who gave good information and who released the journal and given a valuable information i am very much thankful to you sir i thank the, the registrar professor avian reddy for all the administrative and financial support <coughs> for success of the today national conference i am very much thankful to you sir what is name most importantly i thank all the delegates participants paper presenters teaching and non teaching stuff they didn't have a name is the first fellow it is no question is the regular coin issue is name most importantly i thank all the senior members Uh, like professor virender dr jay kishan sir so manohar sir ramchandra right sir dr venkatesh reddy garu professor vijay bab sir danish moin and sinwa uh, sir serena parmin madam anrad reddy madam and south indian numismatic society uh, executive committee members and delegates across the south india i am very, very much thankful to you and also i thank the M emrc computer center uh, engineering branch cstd director and uh, staff all those behind the success of the uh, today national conference thank you thank you one and all thank you uh, just uh, two notifications and uh, thank you raj lakshmi amma for being with us and blesses and uh, uh, shakuntala madam for uh, being with us to deliver the monument lecture uh, i thank one and all all the scholars who are present here and our very very enthusiastic team of our researchers and assistant professors here in ambedkar open university who come to the rescue of us in all the activities whatever we do in the academic uh, uh, activities uh, from the department the ministry from all the faculties our assistant professors are here with us um, day and night they are taking care especially in a short form uh, time they brought this seminar also thank all of them who are associated with all the activities of the seminar and now uh, there's uh, like we started a little bit late and we will uh, break for lunch directly and then assemble here within 40 minutes time 30 to 40 minutes time and uh, start our sessions um, um three sessions i'm hopeful to complete them uh, today and uh, thank the association and uh, non teaching association members who were with us 
like you know in all the academic activities also their contribution is immense and uh, more, um, lastly i thank our vice chancellor though he is away he sent his uh, message of you know successful seminar hope all the researchers uh, will contribute to the deliberations and uh, if possible we have parallel sessions to complete the task of you know meeting the 40 research papers thank you one and all thank you we'll uh, go for lunch now thank you ma'am good for the